Hello and welcome to the first Diary of a Storer podcast slash video in association with the Irish Stammering Association. I'm Simon Walsh and today I'm joined by the Irish Stammering Association Chairman Veronica Lynch and the, the Irish Stammering Association Development Manager Jonathan Linklater. And in this first podcast and video, we're going to have a quick chat about the upcoming National Stammering Awareness Day 2014, which takes place on the 18th of October in Jury's Inn on Custom House Key in D- 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 Dublin 1. And the theme of this year's National Stammering Awareness Day is we all have one voice and we might touch on that later on. Um, F- 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 firstly, um, thank you both for joining me here today. Um, Jonathan, uh, what can we expect from N- N- National Stammering Awareness Day 2014? Well, this is our eighth, eighth year of National Stammering Awareness Day and we've got a range of international and national speakers. We have John Harrison, who would have come up with the idea of the stuttering hexagon. He's He's got a book called Redefining Stuttering, which gets people to, to consider w- 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 what aspects of their stuttering impact on them and how, how you can change those a- areas. We've got Anita Blom, who is the Vice Chair of the European League of Stuttering Associations. She spoke at NSAD previously and she was really entertaining, so Anita is going to be coming back and joining us via Skype. Mm-hmm. We've got Dr. Alan McGroty from the University of Strathclyde, who's been looking at stuttering research and how how people who sort of feel about the possibility of drug interventions. Uh, he he did a stuttering dr- drug survey, so he may present on that, and he's probably going to uh, present on kind of what what approaches are out there, which which are found on on the internet. Um, as in the stammer cure type ideas, which can can be a bit dubious at times, so he's going to give a bit of information on that. Um, we've got some national speakers. We've got Callum Wells, who is also in Irish Stammering Association. He's talking about teaching and education, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, Adrian Bradley is going to talk about International Communication Project, which is a, a global initiative uh, suggesting the importance of speech and language therapy and how communication is vital to life. Um, and Veronica Lynch will also be talking as well, I believe. Yeah, I'll be well. I'll be talking as as chair of the Irish Stammering Association, talking um, about the work of the Irish Stammering Association, and also about the the theme of of the day. Um, and I like to be a little bit challenging about the about the theme generally, challenging people's ideas of what that that theme is um but we also as well as as well as speakers we also have um a drama w- workshop for children who who stammer um so we don't leave the the young people out um and and that's always a a favorite with with the kids they get to have a bit of fun and meet each other meet other kids who who stammer which is really important Mm -hmm. and then we will also have a session an information session for parents so parents of children who stammer can get to meet each other and maybe learn a bit about stammering as well and um what kind of help and resources are are there get a bit more understanding of stammering so there's going to be there's going to be lots going on there's going to be an opportunity for people to to meet each other talk talk to each other as well so um yeah it's a great day for anybody interested in stammering to come along to as always it sounds like a a, a very exciting day um, in terms of the 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 younger people who'll be there on the day, the Gaiety School of Acting will be there to take to take part and Yeah, yeah, they'll be they'll be running the drama workshop. So that's gonna be for about <clears throat> two hours, two two and a half hours. So they'll be doing kind of fun fun games with them. Some of them will be non speaking games, some of them will be speaking games, but it's all about 
helping them to kind of feel feel comfortable about communicating whether they stammer or not and you know for the for the kids it's an opportunity maybe to try out things they wouldn't do if they weren't with other kids who who stammer so you know the gay we've been working with the gaiety for probably about seven or eight years working on this and this kind of thing and they've they've been really um great and understanding you know under understanding the kids and their needs and bringing them on and it's amazing a, a child who won't talk at the beginning of a two-hour session and at the end comes out chatting 19 to the dozen about what 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 went on just getting that bit of confidence in their own voice yeah and is that a continuation from uh, uh, the I say a program that they run during the summer down yeah. where it, 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 they do it, is it, it, it an entire week with, with, with the kids or is it a Monday to Friday they do um, I say we've done we as Veronica said we started that a good few years ago and we've done we've done different variations on that by having some individual days where kids can just get a taste of it we've done kind of more of a a drama school term style event like r- running it over nine weeks and having it once a week f- for nine weeks to get an introduction to to drama um and we do the summer camp as well which is often monday to friday or monday to thursday just shorter slots in in the day where kids can they can do um it starts off as just experimenting and playing with games that can be verbal games that can be non-verbal games and developing characters developing stories and mm-hmm. and the kids can take the stories in the direction that they want to take them which is always quite interesting if like the, the idea behind i say it was to um kind of create a space where where kids could be themselves without too much pressure of, of mm-hmm. talk and i think if you create that space then talking mm-hmm. kind of comes naturally and you and sometimes it doesn't come, and sometimes you, 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 you'll also get ki- kids being comfortable in, in being quiet or or saying saying specific things, which is mm. which is nice as well. Like there's no pressure on the kids. That's what they would. That's what they would reflect back to us, which is kind of yeah what, what we intended. Yeah. And at the core of that is, f- f- uh, like. Uh, to have fun and to enjoy themselves as well then that obviously helps to bring them along I'm sure as well yeah. is that kind of the general idea or is it yeah there, there was like one of the bits of feedback we got up over the summer like I think it was Veronica who asked one of the kids what was what was the best thing about coming along it was it was meeting other kids and he said he felt fantastic afterwards and it's kind of those little little things that I'm sure as as adults who stood there, um, we may not always have met younger people mm-hmm. who stood there. When we were younger ourselves, there was that sense of, am I the only one who stood there? here? Whereas now, if kids have got that opportunity, we've, we've expanded that to teenagers as well, where Irish Stand Association would also run a teenage Skype group for kids who stood around the country. And at National Stammering Awareness Day, we'll, we'll also have a, a teenage talk session where where teenagers can pop in and have a chat with, with um, other people who stutter who've who've been involved with youth youth programs. Um, Karen, one of the people who's going to be helping that that she would have been at at Elsa, the European League of Stuttering Associations Youth Summit. So she's been out and worked with other young people. I think sixteen to twenty three or twenty six mm, or something. Is mm. that kind of age group? So it's getting. I guess that's some of the intention that we had was to get the younger kids meeting the kids who are a bit older and get the kids who are a bit older meeting teenagers and adults. So there's that sense that, that it reduces the isolation. Mm. Mm. Reduces reduces the, the isolation, but also it's like to see, you know, younger kids say, they see other kids who stand who have gone to secondary school and they've survived. So that just reduces their fear, maybe when they're starting secondary school, or if they're going to college, they can see somebody who you know who has to get up and make make presentations. So it's 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 it, it's all it's all about reducing the fear, and it's also kind of 
I suppose, normalizing stammering in the sense that, you know, this is part of of who they are and how they are and that it's not they they can still do everything they want to do so if they if they want to act or they want to get up and sing or they want to perform or or they want to work in the background it's you know that it's just it's giving them permission to do to do that sort of thing um and and you know it's like Getting them to understand that as kids, hopefully they'll have be carrying less l- less stuttering baggage with them going into adulthood. Yeah, because obviously that's so, so something in recent weeks I've spoke about or I've spoke about on the blog is trying to normalise it. And I suppose when you look at the different stages from children, say, to early teenagers, then when they get a little bit older and then into adults, there's probably three or four stages and if you can show them that progression so that they might be in fifth or sixth class they're looking ahead to secondary school thinking that there's no way I can do this and then they meet someone who has Mm. that kind of shows them that that they can do it and and the normalisation, I suppose, it, it, it's something I'm intrigued in personally. I think um, I've, um, uh, even in terms of like openly kind of telling more and more people I stammer, it, it, it's something I kind of w- was undecided about, but uh, I've been practising it, it lately and like um, I kind of feel that it puts me at ease and then it, I think it puts the listener at ease and I suppose when you can get that mindset as well it, it's it's um it's uh, very good as well and and the, then the parents um w- workshop is that something new this year or would that have been take taken part in the in the last couple of awareness days yeah it's it's we've we've done it i think this is about our third or 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 fourth year doing it and it's it's um again you know you're talking about normalizing stammering a lot of parents their child might start stammering and they don't know anything about stammering and you know they might be worried will they be okay when they start school or how how will they be when they join sports clubs or whatever and and so it's it's about um them um you know getting a bit of information or asking questions that maybe they don't want to ask the speech and language therapist or they don't know who to ask the question of and they're you know they're very much uh, you know they're they're isolated in a sense because they may not know other parents of children who 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 stammer as well so they don't know where to where to get information or they don't they you know they're worried about their child every parent worries about their child's future and if they've no experience of it so it's an opportunity for them to get together to chat to ask questions to meet speech and language therapists to find out about how they, you know, sometimes they don't know, for example, should they talk to their child about stammering? So those kind of things come up and there's a bit of a discussion about whether that that is a good thing to do or not. And, you know, sometimes it's about the parents having um, the reassurance that, you know, stuttering doesn't have to be a life sentence or, you know, even for them seeing children who stammer older than their own child and seeing them being happy and having fun and playing again for them reduces the fear of what what the future holds f- for for their child and i, I suppose the pe- in the same way that um the 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 children or the younger people kind of might realize like as you said it's not the be all and end all uh, the parents they're going to obviously meet like older older people that stutter and and um, then obviously through some of the speakers as well and see their achievements and that'll be some kind of positive for the parents to take to, to know that 
their child they may stutter but that's not going to stop them from doing whatever that they would they want to do i suppose yeah it's kind of trying to put out the message that <clears throat> excuse me it's okay to stutter and it it doesn't need to hold you back um but i think that's where the supports come in and the supports of learning how one family may have handled it that where mm. another family can get the benefit of experience yeah. Yeah. and mm. um or even for like a lot of the r research would show that that if you can see somebody else achieving something and doing well with something that that gives you a sense of okay i can i can do that too i can make that phone call i can go for that job interview i can i can order a chinese it's like it's it's those kind of simple simple things that it doesn't always need to stop you doing it but the supports around it and that's i guess that, that's a big thing about stammering awareness day is trying to trying to bring people together t into mm. that forum into that environment where they can they can come along they can l l listen they can ask questions they can not ask questions they can they can sit there quietly they don't have to have to participate and they can just t take in the information i think it's mm. it's providing that and even those that don't ask questions are entitled to the tea and biscuits, I'm sure. And <laughs> they are. They're, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. 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 We don't make don't anybody them, perform for yeah. tea and biscuits. And I, I suppose, <clears throat> just going back to the parents for a moment, I suppose they probably have such a thirst for knowledge of an understanding of stuttering and maybe when they go onto the internet, for instance, and they're picking up information from all different places. So at least when they come to something like National Stammer and Awareness Day, they're meeting the right people to talk to, not kind of getting information that might not be accurate or um, that kind of thing as well, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think, you know, having... Um, well, well, first of all, parents get to meet other parents. They get to meet speech, speech and language therapists. They have people from the Irish Stammering Association there. So there's, you know, there's a certain comfort in coming to some place where, as you say, they feel they're getting um, some credible information. Because when you do, whether you're an adult or a parent or a child, you know, there is some crazy information about stuttering on the internet. And it's very, it is very hard to know what, what to what to believe and what not what not to believe so at a you know at a day like 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 this where you've got you know people that um are offering their experience and offering their um support i suppose um you know it is it is it is a valuable resource for 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 parents and whether it's an adult or a parent or a child national stammering awareness day is that kind of safe safe environment to ask the question maybe you know that you mightn't want to ask anybody else i mean a child is like you know could i be could i be a journalist if i if i stutter yes you could <laughs> and i'll say well it's funny you say that yes, because i know simon yeah. And it's, but it's that they, they think, you know, our parents think, well, they're never, my child couldn't be a journalist. And so it's by, you know, meeting, as you said, people, you know, so it's like, it's, it's adults seeing, seeing other, other adults, but, and then with speech and language therapists being there. So it is a community that can support each other. Um, and, and, and that's why it's really, I think it's really important to get all of those people together on the one day, like at National Stammering Awareness Day, um, so that we can all lear learn learn from each other. Mm. And Jonathan, to those that may be thinking of coming, maybe for the first time, or they might be, um, they might be thinking that they would want to to come, but they're not sure. Um, it, it's always encouraged for them, to, they, even if they don't put themselves out there on the actual day, but just to come and kind of get to hear the speakers and mm. different people as well, I suppose. I think it can be quite daunting, um, even thinking about making a change. And I think that's that's a big step for a lot of people if, if stuttering has been a really big 
issue for all of your life, no matter how how long your life has been. I think it can be looking at doing something when you're fifteen, or doing something when you're fifty, or even older. It it can be a big a big step to to go there and find out that information because that information can it like guess information and it, it will change how you see you see things but I think there's there's always potential to change I think that's that's one of the positive things about stammering and just because there's an idea that just because you accept something like acceptance and stammering isn't it doesn't mean you're resigned to it just because you say okay well I, I have a problem with stammering it doesn't mean it stops at that point and you're uh, and that's all you can ever all you can ever be or all you can ever do is be stuck at that point of stammering that can that can change no matter no matter how old you are as an individual or as a as a parent as a family i think that the, the information you can gain is is um it can be invaluable so i think i think it's sometimes you've got to take a risk on things and um mm. you might feel as if you're jumping off a cliff but it might just be a curb so it may not be <laughs> and there yeah, might be a big fun. soft cushy landing for be. you to yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah well it, it was definitely something positive i done myself personally um the first time i attended therapy and then when i have been to the days over the last few years it's saying it's it, it, after the day I was fine, it, it, it kind of reinforces the belief and uh, the positive things I took from the therapy and uh, you leave kind of almost as if you've been on a refresher course as such and I suppose the majority of people probably take that from the day. Um, mm. Yeah, I think you know it's the sort of it's the sort of day where people who where who are maybe not sure if they want to do something about their speech or maybe they're thinking about doing and they're not really sure or they've now decided that they want to do something and it, it it's it's for them to come in and you know dip their toe in the water, but then it's also for people who who are doing something about their speech. To come along and just touch base with other people because you know very often they wouldn't meet other people who stutter in their day to day life, so it's 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 to come back and meet meet friends meet meet people you met you know the year the year before and the year before that and see how they're how they're getting on and it is it is about that kind of community to you know to gather to gather together so whether you're kind of anxious about going because you're not sure what it's going to be like um n- nobody's going to make you go up, go up to the front you know the front and 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 talk so you can come and look at the back and see what's what what what's going on and gradually work your way in mm. or if you've been there before so catch up with old friends mm. i think it's like the theme is we s- we speak with one voice um and it's the, the idea that like we do, but there's different aspects of that, and there's you'll meet a lot of different people. You'll hear from a lot of different different speakers on the day. You'll hear from people who've done speech and language therapy. You'll hear from people who haven't done speech and language therapy. You'll hear from people who've done the the Maguire pro- program, and you'll you'll get a, a lot of a lot of different angles on it, and a lot of different ways to handle handle stuttering because obviously everybody handles stuttering in a different different way. So there's lots of opportunities to take in different different opinions on it. Mm. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you both for joining me today. Um, th- that's all from the first Diary of a Stutterer um, a podcast slash video in association with your Stammer Association. I'd like to encourage anyone who's thinking of coming to NSAD on the 18th in Dublin to attend and there'll always be a friendly welcome for everyone I'm sure and um, you can catch up on all the timetable on www.nsad.ie um, the list of speakers are there and it, it, there are some I think there's some more to be added on to the list as well and you can find out 
any information you, you, you need there. So for now, it's over and out from us. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. The 2014 National Stammering Awareness Day is kindly sponsored by Speak Soon Communications from the sales of Michael O'Shea's book, Why I Called My Sister Harry. Irish Stammering Association and Irish McGuire Programme also provide financial support to the event.